Band, GE Tigers versus Najini Empire. Cassandra Band right off the bat. And don't forget, OGN.Azuku.TV. Go vote for Super Plays. So Lissandra actually banned out by GE this game. And there's the Lulu as expected. Yep. So whether GE will ban away the NAR this game. Now Corky, interestingly, taken out of the champion pool. So last game, GE banning out Lee Sin, LeBlanc, and Rumble. The Lee Sin ban actually, I feel, working to their advantage. But that was more because Najin decided to pick Jarvan and Scion together as a yeah. strategy rather than it being a good ban in and of itself because certainly Najin could have selected a different top laner with that Narvin for some, or with the Jarvan for some better synergy. Azir now removed by Najin. Don't want to be dealing with that pick again. Oh, Crow did have a very good game on it. It's just so annoying to deal with. And there's the Rek'Sai, so it won't fall over. To Naja, they could still get that casted in again. Jana still available as well. And the LeBlanc, pretty important in this matchup considering that it's a big champion for both Goong and Kuro. Sure enough. Nar also potentially available if Najin doesn't ban it right here. And if you're Najin, there's a big question right now. Do you leave the, oh, Kog'Maw. Wow. I. Well, okay. I did not think we were going to see a Kog'Maw ban, especially with Lulu already banned. Exactly. Yeah, well, Kassadin will be first picked by GE. So now LeBlanc is available. You pretty much have to take Nar LeBlanc right here if you're Najin. Yeah. Because if you give them Kassadin LeBlanc, what exactly is Goon going to play? Yeah, you have to fight the temptation to go for the Narvin at this point. Well, this is, a, as I was going to say, this is a very interesting draft. Because if, it, if we get into the situation with Nar LeBlanc, it's basically Najin on red side taking their solo laners and not having any solo lane counter picks whatsoever. That's a good point. But also you get two really big power picks. They could take the Jarvan. I mean, but Jarvan is a strong combo. They will give the LeBlanc over more than likely. Kuro will want to take that away. And just the way the GE Tigers have been drafting and how much they prioritize denying their opponents. And because GE's on blue side, they know that there's a chance to get counterpicked in one of the lanes eventually anyway. Yeah. I, I think that GE, oh wow. Really? Okay. You have a chance for Narvin and you take Lee Sin. Not sure about that one. That is a bit odd. So I guess you just go Jarvin LeBlanc here, huh? Or Jarvin Jana. They're gonna give uh, a potential LeBlanc over to Goong, I suppose. But Jana is still a very strong pickup for Gorilla. I'm surprised by the Tigers that they took the Jarvan right there when well, just, the Lee had already been taken instead of going for the LeBlanc immediately. Things seem a bit scattered in the pick spans for them. I mean, especially after the, the Kog'Maw ban, after the Lulu ban. It's, that, that really threw me. That was very odd. I don't really know why they thought that specific champion was going to be such a threat without the Lulu on the table. Goon looking to potentially go after Zareth this game, only having that one game on Zareth was a win. He actually did have pretty good skill shot accuracy. Goon had, a, I would say, a pretty good debut on that champion. Yeah, he is good, but it is, you know, another blind pick Zareth if they lock it in. Zephyr taking that Ezreal away from Prey. Prey also always a very, also very good Kuro. Ezreal player. And from Kuro. Yep, you're right. Awesome. So, I, in fact, <laughs> more than anything, I think, away from Kuro right here. And so that he can't counteract the poke coming in from Zara. They have to take the Ezreal. Very, very interesting draft. Whoa, so Najin going for the poke. And that yeah. will be a Callista once again, a champion that has been now played extensively in the West. That's Previously right. in Korea, we saw it with Infinity Edge first, but now the Hurricane build after many NA and EU teams starting to roll with that one. I it really is really good. It's the better build by far. Yeah. Because you at least have wave clear with that build. And the Max Ren, you can just deal so much damage in team fights. And considering you're already going to have a Jarvan and Cassidy in the back line, as well as a lot of AoE slow from Smeb's Rumble, should be pretty strong for them already. Annie being hovered over by Pure. Yeah, I I do like this if they go with it. I, I think I, they've created a very strong engage comp with a lot of ability to move around too. I'd rather really, see Morgana here. I'm looking on the bright side. <laughs> I'd rather see Morgana here for the counter engage or Thresh. Actually, I, I'd like to see Thresh. All right. Well, you know what? You know what, Monty? You're we're gonna, we're gonna see Annie. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much gonna see Annie. Locked in. 
due to time. The thing about it in this composition is that you don't necessarily need the engage because you have the Zareth Ezreal combo for the long range poke. And everybody on GE, very low range except for Janna, and who cares about that, right? So you have three melee champions on the enemy team, and Kalista not the longest range either. So in this case, I really think you just go for counter engage and wait for the, wait for them to walk in, so that Duke can get the Nar ultimate off All instead right. of going for a hard engage. But perhaps they're a little bit worried about the laning phase and they want to lock down this Callista early because the nice thing about Annie is early in lane, Callista of course very easily able to to dodge a lot of skill shots where you can't stop an Annie Q stun. Yeah. So they may be able to trade favorably with Callista if they end up in the two on two. Well, Annie has real just a very good killing lane as well too. They have a great ability to get yeah. forward and cast a lot of those spells with yeah. Ezreal. You can follow up on the suns really well with Ezreal for sure. Well here we go. Najin, can they tie things up against the GE Tigers and force a game three or will GE get another 2-0? and be 6-0 overall in the tournament. Let's get in the game and find out. No finger snapping for watching this season, just a clenched fist in anger. Here we are, GE Tigers versus Najin the Empire. And prey on that Kalista. We'll see how it goes. So far, I believe only Space and Korea getting a win on that champion yet. It wasn't really, wasn't really because of him. No, in fact, uh, they didn't do well that game. But that was also when everybody was just trying to build Infinity Edge, and I really think that's a very bad build on Kalista. Hurricane yeah. is definitely the better choice. Hurricane Emax. Uh, we'll see if he picked that one up from the NA and EU LCS. Or whether he is going to be sticking to that single target. But it's just your wave control is so bad with Kalista, unless she does have the Infinity Edge so she can clear waves quickly by hitting all the minions and then hitting E. Oh, joy, it's hard. All right, so lane swap is called, actually, by Najin. They want this one. GE not so excited about being in the Ezreal Annie lane, and I don't blame them. That long range on Annie is going to make it very difficult for Prey to farm. You know, uh, Callista kind of has like a, you know how ninjas run and like hold their arms behind them? She kind of does that only she walks. <laughs> Which, it's know. like Zed runs. A little bit. She walks like Zed, see? She walks like Zed runs. More aerodyna aerodynamic that way. Or I guess with her, it's spear dynamic. <laughs> All right, well, they are going to find Pure and Zephyr up in the top side. Probably not going to be too happy about that one, especially because they also have to deal with a Rumble Gnar lane, heavily in favor of Rumble. Even though some nerfs on 5.1, which do make it a little bit easier. Yeah, true. I mean, we've certainly seen Rumbles get uh, kicked around by Nars a bit in the past. Oh, a little bit of an early engage by wa engage by watch. Uh oh. Onto Lee. Lee could oh, be Lee's in trouble in here. Trouble. Lee's in real trouble here. Yeah, watch. Going in onto Lee now. Lee may have to get out. There's a QE combo. Really low health. Watch taking some damage from that red buff. Lee, can he get back in and smite it? That's the question. Watch is just gonna finish that off. Yeah, I think it's smart for Lee to back away. Don't want to give up that first blood to watch as Lee's in. That was actually a bit of a misplay there, I think, by Watch. I don't know why he would follow up on his Q before he saw the EQ combo come in, because that allowed Lee to get away. He did get the red buff, though, so yeah. he gets some advantage out of it, just not as much as he might have otherwise. So. Lee going for that blue buff now. At least he's at least he's got enough, enough health to survive this, you know? That was a cute gank, though. You yeah. know, going for the level two without even a buff and then heading into the opposite side of the jungle to contest red immediately. And that will slowly down. You know, it's not really the type of thing that we're used to from Watch as well, too. I mean, he's done it in the past, but not as often as he's just kind of farmed. Interesting start here, too, from Duke, going for the Doran's Blade instead of the Longsword. So he will have a delayed um, Hex Drinker. Yeah. If he does decide to even go that route, he could just go pure tank this game. 
Certainly his team with that Xerath won't be lacking in damage. Well, a little bit of damage from Praying Grill, and they do have this lane pushed up quite a bit, denying a lot of CS from Zephyr so far. Yeah, surprising that they were playing quite so far back, Smith. Yeah. Tag Duke with a couple harpoons. But Duke still laying down some pretty heavy harassment. Smith will have a bit of a hard time farming under that turret. Low tech, high tech, man. See, Smeb is like your fancy new touchscreen smartphone, right? And Duke is like one of those really old, no old Nokias that you can like run a steamroller <laughs> over with it and still oh. find. Oh, Lee oh. coming in though. Duke could be in a bit of trouble here. Now he sees Lee trying to get away and just hopping out. Can he actually make it? No, there's first blood going to Lee. They get the gank to work. Watch on the other side of the map right there. Duke not even yeah. trying to flash out of that one does get caught out in a matchup where he got solo kills last week. Hard to take you seriously when you have those cat ears on your head. Lee looks deadly serious Ooh, with those cat watch. ears. watch, loses the ward as well. Uh, so no chance of coming in from behind. Looking for an angle of mid lane, and Kuro able to farm up easier than a lot of other mid laners actually against this era, just because he does have that magic damage shield. Still gonna try and make oh. a play, Kuro only level five, two level in. four. Yeah, Kuro could be in trouble, there's oh. a flash, can't get out, trying to get some damage in onto Goong. He does force the flash and the heal out of Goong at least, so got some summoners. Now watch, getting chunked down by Lee and Smeb. Smeb teleported down, but they couldn't get the kill. Yeah, now or Duke, up, rather. yeah, Duke did teleport into Lane, yep. so there won't be any follow-up, so they don't actually trade anything. That was a good teleport by Smeb. Use that TP advantage when you have it, and the timer should be close enough to not make too much of a difference in that timing window. Prey and Zepha have evened out in terms of CS onto the, in the top side. And without a recall, we still don't know what build Prey is going. I'd be shocked at this point if it wasn't a hurricane. Well, yeah, like you said, after all those NA and EU games where we saw the strength of that hurricane onto Callista, I really doubt we're going to see anything else. We shouldn't see anything else. I will be really disappointed if we see something else, Noah. <laughs> and really surprised as well. Yeah. Dipo disappointed and surprised. Those are the feelings that we will feel if it's something else. Disurprised. It's my Dis new emotion. Yep. I actually feel that a surprising amount of the time when watching League of Legends. Disurprised. <laughs> you would. It's true. Mostly when I was coaching. Well, is it really all that much surprise, though? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh, uh, we'll, we'll let you get away with that one. Okay. So just a farm fest in the mid lane, yeah. though. Well, Rift Scuttler's going to go to Najin this time. Rift coward. Flee. You coward. See what kind of pressure they can put down. Smeb surprisingly having the CS advantage yeah. in the matchup against Duke. Duke actually going for double Doran's Blade this game. Not something we see on NAR very often. But Smeb really the dominant top laner so far tonight, picking up kills in lane twice. Did have the help of ganks Looking good. in both games. But even so, Goom has missed a lot of stuns actually tonight. Yeah. Oh, G Tiger's going for a dragon possibly. Not a lot of resistance at the moment. No vision, too. It looks like they should be able to get it. They're going to spot Prey going towards the pit, and that should tell them that it's too late now. Yeah, they're kind of caught. Najin is caught while they're trying to swap their lanes right now and get their top laner back up in the top side. So they had nobody on the map, and that's a great timing from GE. So basically just getting that dragon for free right there. Yep. And that'll be the little bit of an advantage that they have so far this game as our gold score is dead even at the moment. Yeah, pretty much. Well, Prey went back and picked up the BF sword, it looks like. Watch is waiting for this one. They oh, really want to make up. Onto Zeppa. They're going to try and bait the all in. Oh, oh Watch comes boy. over the side. They had a ward as well as the Sentinel. But they had, look at the ward warding right now. Yeah, There's really no safe. way for Watch to get in there whatsoever. It's going to punch that stupid ghost head in the face. <laughs> The floating face. They should just really make it do the immune left. Oh, Zephyr really getting poked hard. And Prey is going for a BF sword. Yes, he is. Damn it, Della. <laughs> you're you're disappointed, aren't you? I can see it in your eyes. I, I think Hurricane is better too, but.
Oh well, we know Korea can be a little bit slow to adapt to things like that. To ask him later, maybe they just think bad. No. The thing about the Hurricane build is if you make a mistake, and it does increase your odds of making mistakes because you get so many more dashes off. And yeah. the thing is, you really don't do damage unless you stack up really a ton of red stacks, right? Uh, because all you've got is that attack speed, and you're really reliant on the burst damage from your E. True. So if you have to be that close for so long to deal damage, it does present a little bit of a problem. So when you do more damage with a single auto attack, it does in fact lower your risk. And I think this is what's attractive to Korean players because they are all always, they are and always have been about low risk plays. Oh, Duke flashing away, trying to get away from this gank here. Oh, they trap with the Cataclysm. Watch kicks him out right away, but Duke not gonna be able to escape anyway. That's a kill for Kuro. Really nice actually for GE to be able to shuffle a kill onto their mid lane too. Yeah. Perfectly done, and you saw how fast Duke reacted to that one. Wanted yeah. to flash right into the river in order to avoid that situation. Picked up on the movement from Kuro immediately. Just to kind of follow up what you were saying, though, a little bit earlier, I mean, yeah, Korea is definitely all about safety for their AD carries, and that was a big reason why we never saw a ton of jinx in Korea. We saw it a bit, but not as much, anywhere near as much as we saw at the other regions and continue to see it in other regions. Right. Goon pretty much just clearing the waves right here, but it's not really going to be enough. Yeah. Come the end of the game, he did pick up an assist, but kill went over onto watch. Zephyr trying to hold his own in the bottom side, not going for an early tier, instead building into Trinity Force immediately. All right. Trying to hit a little bit quicker of a power spike. Oh, All right, watch his back. They're trying to get the kill onto Smeb. Duke right, there's is. Meganar. There we go. Yep, he's in trouble now. Smeb still has that flash, but not going to have a lot of health, even if he uses it. Not bothering to burn. Oh, he did. Flash though from Watch. They get out of him. Can Smeb actually live? No. The Q from Watch does it. And meanwhile, action in the bot lane. Tibbers was thrown down. Have you seen the berries on top of you? Zeba could be in trouble, though. Here comes Lee. Lee, they get the kill. Actually, it goes to Gorilla and Pure in big trouble as well. Flashes away, are they gonna die for a Kuro right there? That's gonna be another one for him. As he's up to two kills this game now, and that's gonna be a lot of damage on that turret as well. I have no idea why Najin would try and go aggressive on the bottom side while their jungler was up in top. Yeah. That is such an unsafe play to make when you don't know where Lee is, and they are really punished for it right there. That is not the time to go all in. Well, they got the turret in top lane at least, and Goong was able to do a good amount of damage to the mid lane turret as well, but you're just shuffling. You're just giving so much gold All to right. the Tigers right now. Duke can watch again. being cute. Yeah, that's right. They're trying to trap Smep. Smep did use his flash at the end of that last gank, and he's going to die now too. I also don't understand why Watch took that kill right there. They really need to get some kills onto Duke. It was pretty secure. Uh, Watch has got three kills already, whereas nobody else on his team has killing blows. It was a really smart move right there from Najin. Very clever to wait right there, bait him into the wave close to his turret, and then use their movement abilities to get over and deal the damage necessary. Smeb has opted to go for the haunting guys this game, so isn't going to have the dur durability provided by an early arm guard. Yep. So not the worst move in the world. Duke is... Moving into, looks like Merc Treads next before he gets tanky, or perhaps he'll build that into a cowl. But, right ahead in CS, and he's going to have to have some armor at some point to deal with this Callista. Yeah. Well, dragging up in about 45 seconds now. GE Tigers were able to get the first one really easily, and they were able to get all of the dragons last game. Let's see if they can get another one. Now, all those kills did result in a very early sidestone for Watch, so True. that is certainly helpful to this Najin team. Gorilla patiently sitting in a brush with a pink ward in it. Has a pink ward right in try as well, so he knows exactly how safe he is. And Watch gonna run into Smeb. Oop, one harpoon missed, two harpoon missed, but no aggression right there, especially with Goon pushed so far back. Well, GE Tigers seem to be shifting down towards that Dragon Dome again. I mean, they want to get the second one. Prey sending out the Sentinel. And Dragon up right now. Najin really not looking like they're reacting at all. 
didn't have the timer on the, other on the side last of the map. Night. I think they're just gonna try and take the blue. I guess so. Oh, they'll get the blue, but they give up that second dragon, and Najin can just take our uh, gorillas. Well, what do I think? Some some sort of animal. The tigers. There we go. Can take Najin's blue. So it really doesn't gain Najin anything. They just kind of swap blue buffs. Well, what they get is some more farm onto Duke, so he can get super tanky in this game. And that really is the key, because if Duke gets super tanky, there's not enough late game damage on GE more than likely to shut him down. Just because, of course, that rumble will taper off as the game drags onward, and that Cassidy is all about the burst, yep. so. Well, I mean, the nice thing about having all these dragons for the GE Tigers is that having those buffs does help you kind of mitigate the fall off that would normally happen with a comp like this too. So, you know, if you're going to have that eventuality, you might as well get all the dragons too to kind of mitigate it a bit. Yeah, well, Najin is going to have to confess, con uh, contest some of these eventually. And the question for Najin here is why I was preferring the Thresh was you could at least keep Goong and Zephyr a little bit safer with the front line, but who's going to be healing yeah. for this Zareth in the late game against the Cassidy? And that it's really rough, especially with the long-range engagement of the Equalizer on Rumble. You basically, Kung, Kung is a bit of a sitting duck, actually. You basically just got uh, Lee Sin kicking people away, and that's about it. Yeah, it's really not very good. Yeah. So Kuro will probably be able to find those flanks onto this Zareth, and Kung will be really reliant on hitting his stun for that, and we really haven't seen him do very well with that skill shot so far this game. Yep, always has time to pick it up, but... We'll see what happens. Infinity Edge acquired by Prey. Looks like he's going to be going for a potentially Berserker's Greaves in a moment. Yeah, did pick up that dagger, but found himself with enough money to actually complete the Eye Edge before going for the Greaves. Yeah, makes sense. GE's only real advantage, though, it lies in those dragons. And that doesn't mean a whole lot at this point in time. We're still yeah. very early on in the game. Those percentages not offering very much in terms of statistical value at this point. So, Najin still essentially even, able to come back. Goon has just been sitting here farming the entire game, really hasn't moved out of mid lane whatsoever. Still behind in CS though. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that Kuro's been running around getting kills and things like that. Goon has just sat there and is still, like you said, a little bit down. That well, hurts a little bit. Kassadin is a good matchup against Zareth. Definitely. And it was a blind pick Zareth. It's essentially a blind pick Zareth. I mean, Kassadin was picked by G at the time, right. but they didn't know where it was going to go. Well, Najin really wants this bot turret. Watch coming down here to add a little bit of extra damage. Help push this minion wave in. Yeah. But right there. Well, they should get the turret. Oh, well, there's the equalizer. Never mind. Yeah. Smart uh, just to slow it, just yeah. throw it down right there. Clear out the wave. And Prey Grill will react wow. on the opposite, opposite side by actually taking that tower. So, turret advantage now goes over to GE. Yeah, they've got a little bit of a gold edge out of that as well. As uh, they've got a bit of an edge out of the CS lead down in bot. Although I suppose Duke's lead over Smeb kind of covers over that. Over that. Either way, GE Tigers again doing a good job of controlling objectives this game. Yeah. It's showing. Wow, so many wards, so little time. Wow, is he actually going to get three wards right here? Yes, he is. Man. Easy for Kuro, free money in the river. No kidding. Clearing out a ton of vision from Najin. That was off a, of a very well placed sweeping lens. Yeah. Zephyr finds himself tangling with Cassidy in oh, his own jungle. Kuro, pure coming in, gets a stun with the W onto Kuro, and he'll have to back away now. Duke is starting to pull ahead a little bit in terms of CS, so that's the advantage that they traded that last dragon for. Yep. And he continues to push forward right here, does have the cowl. Well, we've seen what a fed Nar can do, so that could very well be worth it in the end. Objectives coming up, dragon in about a minute and a half now. And we'll see if the Tigers can get their third in a row. It will be a zeal, so no hurricane. No hurricane at all. Poor mm -hmm. prey. Just not going to have that wave clear. Well, once he gets the static shiv, obviously that will help significantly. Yep. 
Pure with a Captain Gem in this game. Or Gorilla, rather, with a Captain Gem in that very early, actually, to get that upgrade. Typically, we don't see that until Janna in the late game. So instead, really wanting to help out Prey yep, as he dashes. Sense. That's actually that's actually really interesting. Because that means that Prey is just going to be moving faster as well as dashing when he's in the immediate vicinity of Janna. Very unique thought process right there, but certainly will help Prey out in terms of his teamfight mobility. I really like that, actually. Yeah, it's really neat. Huh, interesting. That is quite clever. So we don't see the hurricane, but we see uh, another interesting little Callista adaptation. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Take note, other regions <laughs> and other Korean teams. All right, well, dragging up in a few. Najin trying to set things up. Gorilla has the whirlwind coming in. Need to be careful there. Whoa, what a kill. Look at that. Gorilla pops the ult anyway. Didn't need it. There's a great equalizer coming in. Two casts a hop away. And GE Tigers just slaughter Najin EM fire. Wow, that was not. I don't even think you could call that a fight. Wow, two getting really low. They want Lee. He got Meganar, Lee. though. Lee went in a bit too deep, and he's going to pay for it, I think. Yeah, there it is. That Goon was gets that kill. That was a bit uh, too far. That was an overextension, but even yeah. so, Duke still in the back line right there. Prey's going after him. Wow. He doesn't have any armor. Indeed, but they're gonna lock up the turret or occupy it enough. That Prey gets a few shots onto Duke, and it's all about setting up this dragon, I think. Nope, looks like they are gonna just recall a little bit too dangerous with dangerous with Goon still around and Zephyr coming back. Well, this is the first well played Callista that we've seen in Korea. Great combo there too from Smeb and, yeah. and Kuro coming in to get the equalizer and the force pulse off. And Prey, good luck hitting him with the skill shot. Yeah, How are you gonna it. hit him with Tamers? How are you going to hit him with anything Zareth has? You're not. And well. that that effectively forces Pure to use his Q, to use his stun on his Q if they want to lock down Prey. Prey coming back in right now. And yeah, they get the Najin gets the dragon and there's not a lot that the Tigers can do about that. But I think they're fine with giving that up. They took the mid turret because of it. They got some kills. Let's, Let's watch that team fight again. Watch. Decides to go in and just wow. gets critted right at the end there by Prey. Zeffa only hits one person with a true shot run. Knock up, equalizer, force pulse, massacre right in the choke. I mean, GE is just so good at team fighting. Look at their patience right there. They know exactly where to land their AOE in that choke for maximum effect. They were positioned perfectly. Prey stayed back out in the open where he had that mobility. The only thing that could have gone a little bit better is Gorilla wasn't able to connect with Duke with the Callista ultimate, and so they didn't get the knock up, and because of that, they didn't get the kill on the Duke. But other than that, a really nice team fight. And the mid turret, too. There's a Baron being taken right now. Yeah, wow, there is. GG Tigers, jeez. These early Barons. Now, again, this is 5.1. The Baron did get nerfed, and GE Tigers taking full advantage of this weaker Baron. Wow. Dodgen had no idea. They have no idea. Nothing, really, that they could do about it no. either. Second game in a row, GE has had exceptional Baron control right at about the 20-minute mark. Their setup, their timings for their wards have been flawless. Yeah, no kidding. And they tried to bait it last game uh, around that time. But in that game, Najin was up in the top side of the map and able to call out their bait right there while still staying close enough that if they actually started it, there would have been a reaction. This time, all lanes pressed forward. Yep. GE crushing through. Najin knows now. They see that Baron buff, and that has not got to be a good feeling. Oh, it's looking like we're going to see a 2-0 here, actually. Yeah. GE pretty darn far in the lead at the moment. I mean, Duke is getting tanky, but against the power that GE has right now, it's not enough. Prey just so fast. So many hops. You sure those aren't bunny ears? Because <laughs> Bunny's hop, you know. Uh, that's, the, that's, uh, the, that's the joke I was going ooh. for there. Body. Yes. Yes. It was much funnier once I explained it. I really <laughs> wonder why Goong didn't take the LeBlanc this game. I really feel that that is going to be the more powerful pick for him. LeBlanc falling all the way through the draft. Do you know what region you're casting right now? I just want to double check. <laughs> it's, uh, this is Korea, where we blind pick Zareth if it's possible. No matter who we are, blind pick Zareth. It's so bad. <laughs> 
Welcome to Korea. I don't like this part of Korea, though. <laughs> it's it's not my favorite part either. Yeah, I mean, going with that history on the block too, it is. It would be puzzling if it wasn't Korea. I just wonder what he was worried about. I feel like he could have easily picked the LeBlanc here. Worried about making too many plays. A constant concern. Yep. I don't want to get too many kills. All right. Shot barrage, clears some minions. Has it cleared enough, though? I guess so. Just barely. Uh, I think they're just going to tank it anyway, yeah. Yep, there's the tier two turret. Making use of that Baron buff. Meanwhile, wow, the turret mid went down as well, too, at the same time. Yeah, Smeb. And Kuro doing a little bit of work right there. GE should back off right now. Yep. They've got the lock. Go ahead, clear out the enemy jungle. Make sure they can't get. Wow, watching Prey screen is quite dizzy. Yeah, let's Green not lock on to Prey, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's like worse than watching the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Or a Born Identity movie. <laughs> I think the Born Identity movie Those are is, worse, yeah. yeah. Way worse. It's like the ultimate in bad shaky cam cinematography. <laughs> it's like it'd be great if Born didn't keep punching the cameraman, apparently. <laughs> Stop it, Jason Bourne. He's not part of the movie. <laughs> You're breaking the fourth <laughs> wall, Matt Damon. <laughs> this is what happens when you add a camera to Matt Damon's fist and shoot the whole movie through it. <laughs> You're not Shakespeare. You don't get to break the fourth wall. It's true. Only... Uh, only Spaceballs gets to do that. <laughs> well, pray for the extra level of insurance already has a QSS. So now you can't hit him with a skill shot nor a targeted ability. That seems like it's going to be difficult to deal with. Yeah. If you're Najin, you really have no solution right now. Looking good. And we, you know, I mean, saying for a long time, well, really, you've been saying, and I've been agreeing with you, because I just trust you so much, that is going to be a really powerful pick in Korea, and it's... Seeing this game really makes it seem like in the right hands, is gonna be pretty devastating. I also admire Prey. I think he has done really a good job with this Infinity Edge build. And I, I, I'm finally starting to understand why it was played so much. Man, I just love seeing it with John on the Captain Enchantment too. That is, yeah. Well, that really kind of puts the icing on the cake as far as that goes. It's something we haven't seen before. It's pretty smart. Well, all the lanes getting pushed up. GE Tigers just looking to close this one out in yet another 2-0. Continuing their streak, you know, again, GE Tigers have only lost one game to the Generic Greenwings. That is it so far this season. Yeah, very impressive, Yeah, to be sure. Where did that red buff go? I guess it went over to... It did not go to Prey. Hmm. Okay. I do not know. Oh, looks like Smep got it. Oh. Wow, that was weird. I'm not even sure how he got it. He must have got it off of the burn. Oh, from, yeah, yeah. He got it off of the Leandri's burn. Oops. Well, blame Rito for that one. <laughs> oh, here we, here we go. go. Gorilla Whoa, coming in. Gorilla. Wow. The ult from Kalissa to knock up. Pure doesn't die, though. They got Gorilla immediately. Went a bit too far. A kill for Smep comes in, though. G Tiger's still trying to clean up this fight. Bray at about two thirds, make that half health. Goon firing those skill shots, Lee trying to get in for a knockup, doesn't work. Duke coming in, missed oh. his ult though, and Smeb can turn on this one. Watch, tries to come in, but Lee picks up that kill. There's a flash from Kuro, he's gonna come in with the ult as well. They get the kill on him here, Zeppa long gone, and there's gonna be a dead Nar. Goon though, nearly oh. managing to pick one up. Goon, no ultimate. However, he's trying oh, wow. to get those last Qs down. Yeah, not going to get it, though. A little bit afraid for his life as well. Yeah, Prey and Kuro did go down, so GE can't get anything out of that team fight aside from just the kills, but it is another team fight won All by right, the Tigers. this is a little crazy. Yeah, this is the uh, Callista ult. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, well. this is reasons why you don't throw Janna into the I enemy know. team. When you're playing Callista Janna like this, you just want to use it to get Janna out of danger or to reposition Janna next to you to use her ult. Yeah. You don't throw the Janna into the enemy team. Gorilla was the one, of course, who triggered that, though. So. Yeah. Like a good bloodthirsty support, threw himself in there. Oops. Good does flash over that wall, though. Help get the kill. On to Cassidy. Yeah. But there's no further cleanup from that point. And well, dragging up again. 
see if G Tigers can grab this one. The fact that Najin couldn't do more in that fight, though, is really a testament to how far behind they are. Because yeah. when you get a Janna on a silver plate like that, yeah, <laughs> the spoon feeding of Janna, and there Gorilla we go. Just kind of throw himself in there. Third <laughs> dragon for uh, that was G Tigers. That was a little overbold from Gorilla. That happens, though, you know. <laughs> he was he was going for the style points. It's disorienting, you know, when you get grabbed and you're like, all right, I must find someone to hit. So you really just kind of end up throwing yourself at whoever's closest and can lead to some dangerous situations. I've done it too with Janet. All right, well, Najin trying to take this mid turret. Can't quite do it. Here we go. Oh, teleport coming in. Comes the flank. That's still a long way away. Not, not so much of a flank, more than more of a chase from the Tigers. Oh, Kuro coming over the wall with a big slow. There's Equalizer coming through, and nice knockback from Gorilla. Duke gets a big help, but the, is there a follow-up? Wash getting very, very low, gets taken down, and now Prey starting to just absolutely destroy people, and this is going to be a perfect ace. Well. Yes, it is. That's the issue right there. There is no peel for Goong. Uh, yep. Basically, Kuro was just all over him with Lee's help. And their carries had no escape from this cast in the back line. And they are going to, uh, looks like they're, okay, a little bit of indecision there, but they decide to split the team up, send Frey, Lee, and Gorilla for Baron, while Kuro and Smeb take out that inhibitor turret. And possibly inhibitor as well. All those nice little red stacks as Frey. Oh, yeah. Just dancing around the Baron. Ring around the Baron. Yeah. Oh, look out. Here's your E. Here's your E. There we go. And so they get the inhibitor, they get the Baron, and GE Tigers. Wow, really ready to close this one out now. 30,000, oh, not 30,000, 14,000 gold ahead at 30 minutes. I really look forward to the time when Riot caps E damage on monsters, because it's really silly right now that you can deal 2,000 damage to Baron. But anyway, uh, coming in right here through the equalizer. I mean, Duke gets a decent engage, only hits Gorilla, though. And guess what? Hey, who's here to peel for Goon? Bye, Nobody, Goon. because this team composition doesn't have anybody to save him. <laughs> and Duke will find himself isolated with a nice burn down from Leandries with the help of Frey's autos. To be fair, that was Goong's first death this game. Yeah, Amaz he's just been amazingly in, enough. Amazingly, but yeah. at this stage, Kastanen is pretty darn big, and he's just going to stick on you and keep autoing you and waiting for you to use those abilities so he can get his force pulse back up. It's just not a lot you can do, really. Yep. Death cap on to Kuro now. So that Kastanen is going to be doing even more damage. I wonder how many pray. times you have to lose with blind pick Zareth before you learn. Uh, well, it's apparently at least about a month or so now. <laughs> weeks, weeks of blind pick cast it in. Here we go, Cataclysm comes in on the inside. Smeb getting back lines a little bit. Gorilla popping in for the heal, forcing you to wait just long enough for Prey to start picking up those kills. Kuro finishes off two people though. And another easy fight one. Zeppa tried to escape, but no, Kuro. Wanted one more, just one more. Kuro and kills both carries again. Exactly, and wow, this is gonna be, I thought we were gonna go to three games, but instead we get one of the fastest nights we've had yet as the GE Tigers get another 2-0 and improve to 6-0 overall in the season, GG. Wow, what a team these GE Tigers have become. Yeah, and really good picks and bans. I mean, the Callista Very good. worked right there because of, I mean, even though they couldn't have known the Annie was the last pick, and the Annie, in fact, was not a very good pick against this Callista, uh -huh. uh, or the, the for the team comp in any case. But I really think that GE did a fantastic job in their draft again, and they ensured that with Callista, with Ezreal and Zareth, that there were going to be no skill shots hitting Prey yeah. with how much he was dodging around in those fights. And there just wasn't peel for the back line. And they, I mean, honestly, right there, I really did like, with the exception of the Annie, the composition, they just needed one more tool to peel for the back line, and they would have been doing a lot better. They didn't need to engage. They could have just waited and kited it out with the big yeah. front line NAR. So a bit of a weird comp coming in from Najin. And second game in a row, they have, I think, some issues with their composition, and that is reflected in the results. Yeah. Prey, though, what a monster. 4-1-12 and 12 on that Callista. Looking so good. And a win, of course, for the GE Tigers. Looking 